On a previous episode of the Data Bits channel, we talked about a Sony 8mm VCR that was working fine, and we looked at this Sony SL HF600 Super Beta Hi Fi VCR. We saw that it would power on, although partially, and the functionality was not there. So, a YouTube video indicated that there might be a power regulator in the power supply that needed to be replaced. So let's take a look at what it took or what it will take to replace that power regulator. And here she is, the interface for the STK5441 voltage regulator. Having been removed, all of those solder points right there being removed with a solder sucker, which I have here, solder vacuum, if you prefer. Here is the old one, and down here is the new one as well as some thermal paste. So it's going to be very much like installing a new processor. We're going to have to replace the paste. So let's begin by soldering the new one into place. And here's our new one now soldered in place. And also I put the screws back in. You can see them there. And of course the paste went underneath this regulator. So now we get to try it and see if it actually works. And now the moment of truth. Were they right? Is it just the power regulator that needs to be replaced? Well, let's find out. We are going to plug this into the mains and see what happens. I'll zoom out here so we don't miss anything exciting that happens. And we have life. I can now hit eject. See what happens here. Oh, we got to turn it on first. And look, we have a power light now on the power button. Let's hit eject. And she is responding nicely with the new regulator in place. And there's our front display there, as we saw before. It's a little bit sharper, a little bit better than it was before. But in reality, it's pretty dim. The camera just enhances it a bit. All right, so let's see what's on this tape. Remember, we saw the secret garden was included in this VCR purchase. So let's see if it will play the secret garden. This is our handy Sony remote control that goes with this unit. Let's use it to hit play and see what comes up on the screen. And looks like we're getting a nice staticky picture right there. Those could be dropouts on the tape. I don't know about you, but this doesn't look like the secret garden. I've never seen that movie, but it doesn't look like it. So yeah, either there's severe dropouts in this tape or we have something else going on. Now I haven't cleaned the heads on this yet, so let's do that. All right, my video heads are now clean. And what I did is I used one of these alcohol prep pads and I just held it up against this section here. Now, the interesting thing about the way this video head is designed is that the whole thing is stationary. Like on a VHS VCR, the whole head spins. But in this case, the outside, top and bottom, you see divided by that crack line there, doesn't move. But the video heads on the inside are what's moving. And let's see, if I get it at the right angle here, camera that is, we can see it. So there it is. There's one of the video heads right there. And I'll rotate it back around. And there it is. The other thing is that maybe this tape the audio just isn't on it. So let's try a different tape. At last, a VCR that, hooked up to your stereo system, transforms the home video experience into the home theater experience and is fully compatible with all existing data tapes. There's an incredible technological story behind it, but to really appreciate Beta High Five, just sit back, relax, and open your eyes and ears to a new world of home entertainment.
As you just saw and heard, a different tape is revealing some audio, but maybe it's because this one has a normal and hi-fi track on it, and the normal track is what's working. So the AFM hi-fi stereo track is not playing back on this tape. So more investigation is needed. Earlier we were watching a segment of this beta hi-fi demonstration tape, noting that there was no hi-fi available. And that's the sad reality of a lot of these machines, is that they're aging, they're old, and it's amazing if they still work at all. But I reached out to an expert group online, and they are saying generally that the heads on this machine can go bad. And especially the one that reads the hi-fi signal off the tape, if it goes bad, and there's not a strong signal coming from the head, then Sony just mutes that audio. So you don't just get a bunch of static, I suppose. But anyway, uh, that's where we're at on this one. I think I have a nice super beta hi-fi deck that isn't hi-fi. And I can record and play back super beta or regular beta tapes. So that's kind of cool. All right, well, moving on. We have another victim to put on the workbench today. That victim is a Sony mini disc player. One of my all time favorite digital audio recording formats is mini disc. And I have here a mini disc deck. It is the MDS JE510. And apparently, this is a fairly common model. I mean, they must have made a billion of these back in the day. But uh, this one looks good, has good cosmetics. It was sold to me fairly cheaply as non-working. And the bonus is that it actually has the remote with it. Look at all the buttons on that thing. That is a huge remote. So before we plug it in, let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what's going on. And maybe check out this mechanism. Maybe something's damaged in this area. And here's what the inside of this unit looks like. One thing I've noticed right away is this thing has a smell. And I can't share the smell, but it smells like cigarette smoke. It was like opening up a tomb of cigarette smoke when I did open it up. So this looks like it has been worked on before. There's a screw missing there, and there's two screws missing here for the, the, the deck part of it. So there's literally one screw holding this whole thing on at this point. Uh, no obvious capacitor leakage going on here. Got a big one there, a black one, and uh, very, very simple as far as what's inside. It looks like it also has a, a battery backup going on here. So that battery is probably toast, but we can test it and find out. All right, let's go ahead and remove this deck here and see if maybe there's damage there. And here's that deck removed from the deck, the, uh, the disc transport system here. And it's uh, very simple, but I'm seeing something right away that I don't think is a good sign. And that is the, I think this is the read-write head is part of it. And I don't think it's supposed to be way up there like that, kind of almost sticking up past this piece right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug it back in and go ahead and power it on. And we'll see if it does anything or if that moves out of the way. Our unit is now plugged into the wall and I'm going to hit the power button. And sure enough, we do have power and a nice strong display there. Everything looks nice and clear and bright, unlike those VCRs that we've looked at. Uh, I have a mini disc here that I'm gonna try out in it, a little uh, Mariah Carey. So let's pop that in there and see what happens. See if she'll read it. So it looks like she'll spin a little bit. And I can barely hear like a little beeping sound really faintly. And then it gets kicked back out again. 
So it could be that something in that mechanism there is damaged. I don't know if there's anything we can adjust on the laser, but I'll take a look. Okay, we are now looking at the bottom of the disk drive, and I wanted to show you something here. I have worked on LaserDisc players before, and they were having trouble reading disks. And I located this little potentiometer. It looks like this one has one as well. I think maybe every laser red device, like CD players and, and mini disc players, have this little control here. And I believe it controls how much power or the setting, resistance, ohms, whatever, for the laser. So if the laser is a little weak, in, this fact, it, in fact, in this case, it might be trashed. But uh, we can adjust this little potentiometer and maybe it'll wake up that laser a little bit. So it's kind of hard for me to film doing the adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and do the adjustment off camera and we'll see what happens. All right. And a little bit of an adjustment made to the laser potentiometer. Let's see what happens here when we put in a disc. And it looks like absolutely nothing. Just a second ago, it was at least spinning up the disc. I'm thinking this laser is trashed. Now it won't let me eject. And there's what it's supposed to say on the front. Auto loading mechanism. And it will load. The mechanism does load. But unfortunately, none of the adjustments I made had any difference at all. So I'm guessing that this laser is probably junk and I'm going to need to find a replacement. Now, the nice thing is that this entire disk drive is modular. So I can unplug these two ribbon cables here, find another machine that this is working on. Maybe there's something else wrong with it. But if uh, this part's working, I can just swap it out with another one. That's the theory anyway. All right, guys. Well. Tune in next time when we might find some parts for this unit and get a working Sony mini disc player going. Please subscribe to the channel if you missed the last episode where we looked at the 8mm VCR along with that Betamax machine. Be sure and check that video out. Please follow me on the socials, all in the description. And we'll see you next time.